Hello friends, welcome to Pathology Riddles. As new pathology residents, we sometimes make this common mistake regarding reporting of bacteria on a urine wet mount. Whenever you find bacteria in urine wet mount, ask yourself if it's significant or not. Today, I will try to explain this concept using four images. So are you ready? Let's learn. Look at this image. What are the structures that are predominantly found here? Yes, it's the squamous cells and there are bacteria. So let's look at what are squamous cells first. Let's learn a few points regarding squamous cells. Why do you call these as squamous cells? Because these are the most frequent epithelial cells which are found in urine. Secondly, look at the structure. These are large, flat cells with abundant cytoplasm and small, round central nucleus. The margins are also folded in some cells. This structure resembles squamous cell morphology. Then, we should ask ourselves where did these squamous cells come from in the urine? As we know, the distal one-third of the urethra is lined by squamous epithelium. That's why we have got shedding of squamous cells from this area. Also, in females, the vagina or vulva is lined by squamous cells. That's where they are shed from. Let's come to the second structure in the image. Can you notice these rod-shaped bacteria here, which are pointed by the laser? So I repeat my question. Are these bacteria significant in this image? Let's see. Presence of bacteria in urine depends on duration since collection and the method of collection. Duration since collection means the sample should be tested or processed within two hours of collection. The method of collection which is to be employed here is first morning clean catch midstream urine. What do we mean by first morning? That is the first urine that the patient passes as soon as he wakes up. By clean catch midstream urine we mean that the male patient should be instructed to collect urine by the following steps. Firstly, expose the glans penis, wash the glans penis with soap and water, then collect by discarding initial urine and collecting the remainder in sterile bottle given to him. While the female is advised to clean the urethra with soapy cotton balls, followed by rinsing the same area with water saturated cotton, after which labia should be separated, initial urine discarded and the remainder urine collected in sterile bottle. This bottle should reach the lab as quickly as possible. Now look at this image. Do you think in this bacteria is significant? Yes, because the presence of greater than 10 neutrophils also called as pus cells along with RBCs and bacteria suggests that there could be possibility of infection. Note that neutrophils were absent in the previous image which easily helped us decide it is contamination. Let's note a few points about neutrophils, also called as pus cells. Neutrophils or pus cells are the predominant type of WBC found in urine. These have got granule in the cytoplasm. So they are defined as granular spheres with multilobate nuclei or small round discrete nuclei as you can see here. 
greater than 10 neutrophils or pus cells per high power field with bacteria suggests that urine culture should be done to check for infection. Along with this, two other tests which can help us to detect urinary tract infection are the dipstick test, that is the nitrite test and the leukocyte esterase test on the first voided urine sample. Now, nitrite test is done because gram-negative bacteria like E. coli, Salmonella, Proteus, etc., if present in urine, will reduce the nitrate to nitrite by the bacterial enzyme nitrate reductase. This is a helpful screening test for urinary tract infection. But since all the organisms like Staphylococci or Pseudomonas do not reduce nitrate, a negative test may not rule out urinary tract infection. And also, it takes 4 hours for nitrite conversion by the bacteria. So, first voided sample has to be given. Secondly, leukocyte esterase test detects the esterase enzyme released in urine from leukocyte granules. Now, this does not detect uh, if the leukocytes are less than 5 in number per high power field. So, if this test is positive, culture has to be done. In this image, I want you to notice these clumps of pus cells. Can you see aggregates of WBCs together? Okay, there are also bacteria in the background, but they are too small to notice. And the uh, presence of clumps of pus cells along with this bacteria are also an important clue for urinary tract infection. So, if we find clumps of pus cells, then we should suggest urinary culture. In this image, can you identify the structure? These are white cell casts. These are cylindrical structures in which there is stamp horsefall protein matrix in which the WBCs are embedded. So, what does this indicate? Where does the WBC come inside the tubules? That is from the interstitium. That means the patient has got tubular interstitial disease and the most common disease among them is the pyelonephritis. So, along with this, if the patient also has epithelial cell casts, then we are sure that it is renal in origin. So, now we have to find the causative organism and culture has to be done. Before going to the summary, please make note that the patient should always be informed about how to collect his specimen. Let's summarize what we have learned today. Neutrophils can increase in many kidney diseases like glomerulonephritis, SLE, interstitial diseases, calculus, etc. So, a combination of pus cells greater than 10 per high power field, bacterial presence, nitrite test positive should raise the suspicion of urinary tract infection and a culture should be done. Second point is that WBC cast along with the previous three points should raise a suspicion of pyelonephritis. Third point is urine bacteria should only be reported in fresh urine that is less than two hours. Fourth point is urine culture should be done for confirmation. Also note that if culture shows three or more species of bacteria, it almost always indicates vaginal flora contamination. And the most important point is presence of bacteria in gram stain in an uncentrifuged urine sample which is seen under oil immersion suggests colony count of greater than 10 to the power 5 per ml that is suggestive of urinary tract infection. If you like this video, please press like button and then Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done yet. Share it with your friends and comment on how did you find it. Thank you.